Hello. Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. So um, today I'll be talking about BDD with cucumber. So um, a little background of me. So um, I'm Gui. Um, it's easier to remember if you know like graphical user interface. That sounds the same. So in like normal lectures when they talk about that, I, like seems like I've been called. So. Um, I'm a software engineer in ONAP, and um, I work with Java, Python, and Lua. So um, Java as a middle end, Python as a server-side configuration, and also Lua for Nginx. And Ruby, so yeah. Um, I'm also an active member of uh, KL Ruby Brigades, and I do um, a lot of like volunteering jobs, not jobs, volunteering um, um, events for Rails girls and also reach out to universities, um, helping to grow talents in um, Malaysia. So a background of my company. So um, our company does um, cloud infrastructures. So we do VMs, um, DNS, CDN, cloud storage, um, uh, disaster recovery. So we are like um, a B2B service where we sell all the cloud infrastructures to our clients to compete with someone like AWS. And so our office is doing the CDN portion. So we have like 170 plus location worldwide. Um, our job mostly is maintaining ages and also um, part of our service will have like video streamings, um, file caching like images, CSS, JavaScript, and um, live streaming. So um, that's about it. So let's talk about um, what you expect for this talk. So you know about what is um, BDD after this talk, um, introduction to Cucumber, and also how our company on app using Cucumber. So um, first, what is BDD? So uh, BDD is a synthesis and a refinement of practice stemming from TDD and ATDD. So what is ATDD? So ATDD is acceptance test driven development which have um, been used mainly for product design. So when you have product design you will have like this kind of process where you have three different hats. So you will have a, a person, a group of person, uh, people that represent customer a group of people that represents um, development and testing. So all three groups of um, people will work together to come up with acceptance uh, tests, uh, the requirements for the feature. And it um, also represent the user point of view and act as a, point, uh, as a form of requirements that describe how the system should function. Um, in some cases, we also, uh, the team also automate the acceptance test. So next is uh, test-driven development, TDD. Um, that's the common stuff in like Ruby community. So uh, test-driven development refers to a style of programming, which uh, consists of three main activities, which is coding, testing, and design. So first, we will write unit tests. Um, then we run the unit test. So write a minimal um, behavior that you expect to um, behave on your feature, and then write your code. So this code is mainly to pass your new test because you are trying to um, produce some behavior that you expected. And then um, refactor. Make sure your code is clean and is, can be maintained for long term while passing the unit test. And then you repeat the process together. Okay, so um, next. So this is the BDD tactics um, for um, practicing BDD. So first, um, user story. So you apply the five whys principle to each proposed user story so that the purpose is clearly related to business outcomes. So five whys as in WHY. So I ask the question why for five times. Why do you need this? And then why? Continuing asking why will make it very clear that what your features is about. 
and also uh, next thing is um, behavior that consider the behavior that contribute the most. So thinking from the outside in, um, you will implement that um, the features that's more resonance to the client. So you don't um, create stuff that your client doesn't need. And then the next thing is to describe in single notation. This is very important because um, when you design certain stuff, like you design um, a feature where certain keywords are very um, specific for, for programmers and it's not understandable by designers. So to make sure that everyone is the same page, do use the single notation to um, translate and also um, express your features so that every single one in the different group of um, your team understand what you're talking about not using specialized keywords because no one will understand that. And then um, applying this technique all the way down to the lowest levels of abstraction of the software and paying um, attention to the distribution of the behavior because it will be easy for you to maintain or change if you really understand what the system is all about. So do understand the behavior that you um, spread, spread around until the lowest level. To recap, so um, BDD is to help create um, understanding of the business requirement and also help to design the feature and also serve as documentation and test, test cases. So um, Goshko Azizik, is one of the prominent um, figure in agile and software development. He described BDD as specification by example. So um, he also wrote two books, which is um, Impact Mapping and also by the title uh, Specification by Example. So to practice this, that consists of two activities. The three amigos. Um, this is the first activities where you have a specification workshop so first, you will have the project product manager, which um, will describe the user needs in um, the user side of the story. So you have the requirements, the user behavior, what um, customer wanted. And the next thing is the developer. So the developer will also raise concerns on how to implement, what is the technology, how to maintain, what the infrastructure that's needed, all the stuff. And then next is tester. The tester will raise some question on whether um, this feature is feasible, not really feasible, like how to test it, what age case cases that is not being um, considered. So um, people in charge of um, defining the requirements, which is the product manager, will sit down with all these um, programmers and also uh, testers to um, discuss the feature to be implemented. And then they come up with examples on how the software should behave and write down as a cucumber scenario. So um, during this phase, the workshop, the most um, commonly used practice is example mapping. So example mapping will take like 25 minutes. And then um, there's different colors. The first color is yellow, which will show the story and then rules um, example and also if you have questions during the um, example mapping you can put on the right side so you don't forget about it because questions are important and when you design certain feature you have question you forget about it then that's a bad thing so remember you have questions you put on the right side so you need to settle it and then um, this will help you to zoom in and focus on the smallest piece of behavior inside your story and also um, tease apart the rules, find the core of the behavior that you want and defer the rest until later. Means you don't want your story to be too big. You don't want to implement everything in one shot. You want to s break down in smaller pieces. So if you find your story is too big, you can break it down even smaller. It's more easier that way. And with this scrutiny, example, example mapping acts as a filter, so it prevents a fat story from getting into a sprint and explode during last minute. You don't want that. 
So um, here are the comparison of scenario. Just now we mentioned about cucumber scenarios. So a scenario is an example of the system behavior from one or more user perspective. So this scenario is example from the user side. Okay. Acceptance test. Uh, sorry, acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria are a set of rules which covers aspect of the system behavior and from which scenarios can be derived. So acceptance test is a set of rules from the system. So you can give example with scenario for your acceptance criteria. That's the difference. One is rules, one is example. Okay, um, during workshop, you will need to make a decision in the end, right? So you need voting. So commonly used voting is Roman voting, which you will have the like button or the likes, thumbs up. And uh, thumbs up means I support the proposal um, sideways. Sideways means I go along with the wheel of the group, means I have no command. I neither agree or disagree. I will go with the group and then thumbs down. I don't agree and I would like to speak. So um, if you have a mixed scenario where you have a thumbs down and also some thumbs up, you need to further discuss on what can be um, explained or clarified so that everyone reaches a common consensus. So if you still have a thumbs down, make that resolve. So everyone should either have a thumbs up or sideways to reach a consensus. Okay, um, the second activities of the specification by example is outside in development by programmers. So let's take this example. So you have Google, you want to search something, you search for timer um, for like one hour, it should show something like that. So um, for this activities, you start with the functionality that closest to the user, the user interface, which is on the outside of the system. So you focus on what is closest to the user rather than directly go to the system itself. And you gradually work uh, towards the guts of the system, business logic, persistence, messaging, and so on, as they discover more what's to be implemented. So if you um, look at the user point of view, you understand more how user works in your features rather than directly jump into doing the stopwatch logic. It doesn't make sense. Like, Will it really use that? Um, so now we are going for Cucumber. So um, that's the picture when my team first which, um, given a task on Cucumber. It's very scary, right? So yeah, uh, Cucumber is a behavior-driven development. It's um, the strength of Cucumber. And it's written in Ruby, yay. And uses Gherkin. Um, it's a DSL language, um, the domain language for like Ruby, uh, not Ruby, Cucumber. So you need to write in certain language in order to parse. Um, commonly used for design, documentation, and regressions. Okay. So a note for everyone, Cucumber is not a testing tool. So if you want to use Cucumber as a testing tool, it is not. So this is why. So the creator of Cucumber says that um, if you think Cucumber is a testing tool, please read on because you are wrong. Cucumber was born out of frustration with ambiguous requirements and misunderstanding between people who order the software and those who deliver it. Because there's a miscommunication between the requirements and the person who designed it. That's Cucumber came into place. It's not a testing tool. Testing tool is to test whatever you write or before you write in the um, system way. This is from end to end, starting from user until the system. So um, Gherkin, let's talk about Gherkin. Um, it also means pickled cucumber, those you found in burgers, but it's not that. It's a business readable um, language. It's in pure English or any language in a smoke, uh, like French, Malay, Chinese, you can do whatever language you want. And it's a domain specific language, DSL. So they have certain format to do that. It's business readable um, and somewhat conversational and very specific logic. It 
help you to um, express features in natural language. Um, it uses given, when, and then. So um, just like experiment, where you prepare, you execute, and you observe or verify. It's available in 60 languages. So whatever language that you use, you can use Cucumber. Whoever designed the feature, whoever your product manager is, they can write Cucumber. So um, this is in Malay. So you can write, actually write a um, Malay Cucumber scenario, and it still works. Later, we'll get to this in demo. Okay. Um, okay. Let me explain about <coughs> Gherkin in the feature files. So all Cucumber scenario will end up with dot feature extension, and then so use the example just now, the Google search. You have a feature um, timer countdown in search result. So this is a broad um, uh, explanation of what the feature is about, and then the scenario is the example that you want to try. So it's user able to see the timer when searching it, and then. Um, given that user Adam opened the website Google, when he types timer for one hour, then he presses the button search, then he's able to see a timer. And the timer is counting down from one hour. So the green color, that place, feature. So what is the feature? Feature is a bigger picture of what is the feature does. <clears throat> Scenario is a test case or behavior, a use user uh, user experience. So is um, you look at it as a user site of using your feature. Um, given so is a setup precondition. Um, when is the action, and then um, then is to verify the outcome. Okay. So we extend we expand the feature file. Now we have backgrounds. So background will have like given a user Adam when he opens a Chrome browser, then he able to see the search bar. What does a background in a Cucumber files does? So a background is to set up states and condition before running um, any scenarios, and it runs as a before hook. So for every single scenario you have, a background will run first. So you can write other um, scenarios; it will still run the background. So you can write some precondition before a sample um, your example or the scenario runs. Okay. So the red color one, you can see uh, given the username Adam. This will need a step definition to actually use it. So from here you can see given a entity name, do entity name. So you abstract the values of entity and name, you load from a fixtures and then you will see whether the features is already exist. If it's not exist, you create the entity. So you need to do some um, process or um, Ruby functions to make sure all your entities are well set up. And um, this is called step definition. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, additional glossary, so we will have hooks. Just now I mentioned about before hooks. In Cucumber, we have before and after hooks. This is part of the configuration. So if you see after um, Cucumber, so you can tell Cucumber to quit. If you find any um, errors, you can set that. So it won't continue to run if you set the configuration to two. And then um, it also allows tag hooks. So if you use add something, this is called a tag. So you can run in tag. Also, you can use wherever this hook is been identified, do certain stuff. So this is also part of the configuration of Cucumber. Maintainable Cucumber. <clears throat> First, you need a feature file. Um, next, you will have a step definition. And then you will have helper class, helper uh, folder. So these three are the main components to um, write Cucumber. So you need a feature file, step definition, and helpers. And then fixtures and hooks or configuration, those are optional. This is to make sure that you will have your Cucumber more um, um, featured, more uh, running more smoothly, and do some tweaks 
on the scenario. So let's see whether I can get something up. It's not. Oh, okay, it's already here. Um, so need to show you something on the cucumber. So how we use Cucumber in our normal work is So you can see our structures. From here we have features, and then inside features we'll have like step definition and support. Support is all the features and the helper class and also some configuration. This is how we set up um, for Cucumber. Let's go back to slides. Okay. So um, there's one conference called Chuk in UK where it talks about BDD and also um, Agile development in Cucumber. So that's one saying that you need to keep your step definition clean. So you can use helper class and variables to prevent you from calling a step and another step. So you have like creating a web block. Then you have when I create a web block, you will call create a web block step you don't do that because it will deprecate very soon. This practice will um, couple all your step definition together, which will make your dependency <coughs> very tightly coupled. When something changes, it will break a lot of stuff. So we advise that people to use um, classes to replace step calling steps. So that's the link for the, uh, the, for the conference. So how we make use of Cucumber in our company. So first, we draft a user story um, according to Gherkin. That's our product manager doing that. And then um, we write Cucumber scenarios before and during development. So it's like TDD. We write the um, scenario first, <coughs> run it, and make sure everything is in place and it fails. And then we um, create the software and also um, build the software to make the test pass. Um, and also, this is the thing. Run Cucumber against your development branch and also on, in build servers. So when we push to like our build servers, Jenkins, we will run a process of, of Cucumber. It will validate all our um, software, whether it's, it breaks or there's any changes in behavior. So that is serving as a regression. So we will know whether our new features will break the current existing um, behavior. Okay. So um, let's talk about my experience with Cucumber. So there's good things and bad things about Cucumber um, when you work on it. So the bad things. The convention and also maintenance. It's very hard to set a tone in writing a Cucumber because you need to write in a certain way so that everyone can onboard easily and also people are um, like in the future you write scenarios much more easier. So let's take an example of what we have uh, just now. Okay, so you can see this scenario is very nicely formatted. It's not one or two days work. To set this convention, you need to know what you are doing you need to know how to make it modular. So if you write like just normal English, you won't reach this state because every person writes um, sentences are different. You don't want to step support all those kind type of um, ways of writing English. It will be hell in writing your step definition. And then um, 
this is also a pain point to maintain a cucumber because every single time a new feature come up, there's a new sentence, a new type of behavior that we want to support. So um, it's kind of painful to do that. So let's move on. The good thing is about Cucumber. Documentation and regression. So do you like to update your documentation every single time you change something? Like everywhere. If you have version one of the stuff and then you have version two, version three, or you make a small tweak in certain component and it changes other stuff. Do you want to update all the document that relates to it? Or you just want a single place of truth? Cucumber. So that's what we see as a very good, um, in very good method to do that. So as um, business d people don't have to ask us what is the behavior of certain stuff. You just read Cucumber because it's English. You understand English, right? Ah, it's easier. You don't have to ask everyone to verify certain stuff. And also regression. So in the future, if you add features, you make sure existing stuff doesn't break. This serves as uh, regression checks. So why should you use it when you brainstorm new features? It's very cheap to write in English in Gherkin rather than writing a code base and then throwing out. You, just, you need to understand what you are trying to build. So write in English in Gherkin format. Um, and if you are hitting constant problem and conflict during development across teams, so you have like a designer team, then they pass to a programmer, then they pass to the designer, the designer fights with the programmer, this is not what this word meant, because there's no clear communication, you just, the product designer just throw the docs to you, and then the programmer thinks that's what it means, there's no communication, there's no coherence on understanding the single notation, so you want Cucumber to do that. Um, you need a single point of truth, it's very important. And you don't want to update documentation when old features being changed. So why Cucumber probably not for you? Uh, if you are building a features that very, very clear instructions, you don't need Cucumber, it's a lot of process. Um, designing a feature that doesn't involve everyone, so you only involve one parties, then maybe not suitable for you too. Uh, or you just want a testing framework. This, again, this is not a testing framework. If you want a testing framework, go for Capybara or RSpec. That's more um, the suitable framework for you. And we are moving some of our Cucumber scenario into RSpec because we think that we are uh, more comfortable in doing it in RSpec, but we still maintain some of the stuff in the Cucumber. Company that uses Cucumber, so we have Typeform, PayPal, and also Groupon. Um, Chicken Fest. <laughs> so this is a conference of uh, BDD. It's in UK. So you can go to that link if you want to know more. And these are the reference that you can get if you want to know more about Cucumber. It's in GitHub. It's open source. And let's see, yeah, Q&A. So the slides will be in here. And I found that a lot of people thought shows a lot of cat pictures. So we have our office cats do have a Facebook page. Our employee do that. So we have, yeah, we have a page for them. So if you want to go to Tigi Nino, it's actually our office cat. Yeah. So let's see whether we can do a quick demo. Just now I promise. Ah, oh, the light is bad. Can you see the orange, the yellow color links? Is it better now? Okay, so um, what I'm trying to show here is running Cucumber in Malay language. Because just now I mentioned, right, you can use 60 language to write your Cucumber scenarios. So this is in Malay. 
So to run it, you just type cucumber and then your feature name and then just run. So it says that, uh, let's see, make it bigger. Mm, it says that your step definition haven't been implemented. So the first time you run, you write your cucumber scenario, you get this, you will say that your step definition is not implemented yet. So let's go to the step definition. Okay. Wow, this is worse. Okay, so you just copy everything in. Try to uncomment this out. And then you try to run it again. Maximize terminal, run it again. So yeah, you can see that after you copy to the step definition, you will say pending because you there will have a pending word in the comments here. You can see there's a pending here to prevent you from not writing it. If you just blindly copy it, it won't pass. Store terminals, maximize terminal. So if we do this, we just comment out the pending. <laughs> because you for here you should write your cucumber uh, helper class and calling your helper class to do stuff. For you, try. Okay. Thank you. Start the middle. Maximize the middle. Okay. So now, yeah, it passes. So you need to write certain stuff in the step definition in order to pass. So this is how it works. And then control pass. Oh, the color is not there. So you can see it runs a feature files at step definition. What's the line number is running. So this will help you also to understand what you are doing. Okay, that's it for me. Any question? All right, thank you so much. Good. Thank you for speaking about testing. Still won't do it. Joke. All right, uh, any questions on testing strategies, BDD, TDD, whatever you'd like to ask? Sure, go ahead. Hello, oh, yeah. Yeah, so because Cucumber is used mostly as a documentation tool and a regression tool, not as a testing framework, so how if it's possible to share the documentation that we write using Cucumber with non-programmer people, because uh, normally I see it's inside the code base itself, so it could be not accessible. So do you have any idea how we can do that? So um, Cucumber meant for a single point of truth. So yes, it's correct. It will be in a Git repository. Um, so to allow people to see it, we will need to give access to the business people. And um, we introduce how to write Gherkin for them. So they can write on um, the Google Doc for us. Our product manager will write on the Google Doc. And then we will translate into our um, um, Gherkin format because we want to make it maintainable. Whatever um, product manager will do, it will paste some pictures on the wireframe. So we need to translate it. So this extra work for us, but you will find a way to um, a middle ground where you can work with a pro product manager to find a way where it works best for the team. So different teams have different needs. It just need to find a way to work around that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So there's no way to visualize it at all? 
Uh, from what I know, no, <laughs> there's no visualization. That's a project available for anybody. Any other questions? Can you talk a little bit about the technical background of your product managers and how you got them to pick up this for your process? Okay, um, so my product manager previously is a, like our part of our programmers actually, and then he he doesn't do much um, development after he moved up to product manager. So um, to make product manager understand Gherkin is like doing ex um, experiments. So you have a three keywords, given, when, and then. So ask them to follow these three rules, given that some condition, when you do an action, then what you should see. So it's easier for them to understand if you have like these three words, and using these three words, you can translate into scenario. It's very sufficient for that already. Do you use that in addition to any project management tools? Um, for now, no. We just use it plainly, like, yeah. Number. Any last questions? No, no, it's all right. <laughs> Alex is shaking his head like, no, no, no. <laughs> all right, if there are no questions. Thank you so much, Gui.